Well, for nearly 40 years, one Hoosier has reigned as the premier attorney for dead celebrities. Our Mary Rachel Redmond caught up with CMG Worldwide CEO Mark Rossler to talk about the company's evolution over three decades. Plus, one of James Dean's relatives weighs in on why CMG is critical to preserving the Dean legacy. You ain't not Elvis? James Dean? Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Marilyn Monroe, all dead for several decades, but still making big bucks. And they all have one man in common. That's Faber's daughter. His name is Mark Rossler, and he's the foremost so. expert in protecting the rights of the famous deceased. These are the suits from the Blues Brothers. In fact, he quite literally pioneered the industry himself after getting a law degree from IU nearly 40 years ago. I was in the right place at the right time. I, I went to the chairman of the company. I said, I would stick around for a little longer if we set up a separate company where we could use some of this expertise and represent outside clients. And he said that was a, thought that was a good idea. That company would soon become CMG Worldwide. And as founder, Rossler now represents what one might call the who's who of the departed. From the king of pop to the king of rock and over 300 of the most sought after celebrities and brands in the world. I started the business here in Indianapolis in 1981. I was a young um, attorney and I thought that um, there were ways that we could protect name and likeness. This is a Marilyn Monroe skirt. Before Rossler, a celebrity's right to cash in on their valuable name ended when they died, leaving their loved ones with no control over who could profit from their likeness. May I have some dirt? Please. <laughs> One of the first to benefit from Rossler's help happened to be a fellow Hoosier. I can remember him uh, really like an older brother. Marcus Winslow is the cousin of James Dean, yes, and he still lives on the very farm where Jimmy, as he was known in Fairmount, grew up. Oh yeah, the movie posters are original. East of Eden to Rebel Without a Cause, and Rebel wasn't even done yet when he got cast for Giant and he just finished Giant when he died. So he really only did three, three major movies. And despite making only three pictures before his untimely death in 1955, his Rebel Without a Cause image started popping up all over the world and was making someone a lot of money. You know, for a long time we'd seen people with James Dean t-shirts and so forth, and I never seen anything that wasn't in good taste, but it's just, You'd see him wearing these T-shirts, and it seems strange. You think, well, you know, they're they're someone is selling that to him, and the family has no say so in it. I had grown up a few miles away from where James Dean was buried, so I went up and talked to the family and said, "Hey, I'm trying to do some things with the Elvis Presley estate, and I think we can also do protect James Dean." And they thought, well, that was interesting, so. That was our second client. When CMG took over, uh, we started having some say-so and, and what was done and how it was done. And uh, we got into a couple major lawsuits. Took a lot of unnecessary chances. Warner Brothers saw James Dean as a great example. They surprised us and they um, filed a, a lawsuit for $90 million. Warner Brothers took the position that they owned everything we took the position that they owned nothing. And it turned out to be the landmark case that would put Rossler on the map. We went to trial, it was a two week trial, and we won on every single issue. And it turned out to be a good thing for us. Uh, we never had anybody challenge our rights after that. And thanks to Rossler, Dean's iconic image is worth more today than when Dean was at the height of his career, cut too short. How old would Jimmy be? 89. Mary Rachel Redman, Inside Indiana Business.